Now, if you know a child who's struggling at school, says they're bored and starts to misbehave, you're not alone. A recent study by the Grattan Institute found that up to two in every five Australian high school students are disengaged from classroom learning. And that's got some wondering whether it's time to rethink the way those students are taught. Tonight we're focusing on one attempt to get disengaged students back on track. It's called Big Picture Education. It first started in American schools in the 1990s and is now making some headway here in Australia. Late Lines' John Stewart met up with a group of Big Picture students in Newcastle to find out what's turning them around. Hey Blake. How you going? You want to come out and uh, play some footy or basketball? All right. Sherry. Yeah. How's it going? Boys, so don't leave me hanging. This, yeah, that's good. And from there... So make sure that's also in your portfolio as well. Like yeah. anything that you send out into the world, document it and then reflect on it. Yeah. So you could have like... Um, up here might be the email you sent, yeah. or even the email he, you sent, one he sent, and then like annotate it with post it notes. Yeah. Struggling to keep up with the work actually made me less focused at school. So I got distracted super easily because I'm like, well, I'm not doing any of the exams anyway. What's the point of being focused? Like, I'm not doing very well. So, and then I just started going downhill from there. Honestly, I've had a mind blank again. <laughs> I can't remember the name. But you have spoken to somebody. Yeah, and um, she's going to let me come in next Friday to go, go do like testing at Sports Science Labs. My dream is to be able to race V8 supercars. Um, that's, I work every day to try and um, achieve the goal and uh, that's, where, that's what my aim is to do when I leave. Where do you see that being important in, in terms of racing? Obviously you have to have good vision to be able to see what you're doing. Yep. Um, but you have to make sure that you're really focused all the time. Yep. You can't have your eyes wandering left to right, left to right. So yep. you just got to make sure you're fully focused. That portfolio really has to stand on its own as depth and really quality work. And so the advisor works with the student with that to make sure that you know, they're covering sort of mandated content, but also going deep into their passion and learning about a bit more than they, what we call the non-Googleable questions. Wish I could ring up my friends in mainstream schools and say, oh look, my students won't leave the classroom. <laughs> because, you know, they're just so engrossed in their work, they don't want to go out for a break because they want to get this thing done they need to get done. So that's really a lot different to, you know, having kids just racing out the door at the end of the lesson and wondering whether they've actually learnt anything. So that's a big change. Being able to focus on my passion is what's really driving me to do all my work. So I come to school every day now, I'm loving it. Cooksville Campus is here to re-engage disengaged students um, and disengagement comes in many forms here. Um, students that have not been able to learn the way that teachers have been teaching in mainstream, haven't connected with curriculum, haven't connected with the busyness or the social um, intricacies of mainstream high school. Um, and lots of kids here that are here because they already have a passion and interest that they wanted to develop further. How was I to know that this was always only just a little game to you? All this time I thought you'd give your heart, I thought that I would do the same for you. Tell the truth, I think I should have seen it coming from a mile away. When the words you'd say, ah, baby, I'm a fool who thinks it's cool to fall in love. Well, I love the body and that's my main little love. Yeah. But I also love learning about the ethics of being a yoga teacher and how you can live by the yoga sutras and the yoga lifestyle. So, and bringing that into your teaching and letting people know about it.
every single person that provided feedback to me was like, wow, she's, she's only 16, but she's just as good as any of your other teachers. Mm. So yeah, so it's just wonderful. Yeah. Mainstream school for me was a bit boring. I was not motivated and I didn't really know what my passions were. I didn't get to find out what I loved because I was being fed stuff that wasn't what motivated me and made me inspired. We work really hard on making sure that each student knows that they are responsible for their own learning. They're responsible for what they want in life and they actually work really hard in that way. We say to them, this is your opportunity to show us what you can do. I've got so many friends that are just, they just go to school and follow the steps and they're just going to get an ATAR. But they don't know what they want to do and they just think it's so cool how I already know what I'm going to do. I'm already making steps to get there and they just think I'm so lucky. The young Matildas haven't qualified for the World Cup for I think over eight years. So it's a big goal of ours. We have a new coach and he's quite firm on us, um, especially fitness side of things. So. We're definitely aiming to get to the World Cup this year. Over, left, over, right, good. Come on, come on, work, 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 right, hammer up, find it, find it, come on, away we go, accelerate, accelerate, good. My biggest project was the injury prevention program that my mentor Jackie and I put together, so that's used by the Newcastle Jets W League team. It's a program that reduces injuries, basically it helps the body prepare itself for movements it's about to execute during the training session. Okay, so we're measuring thumb abduction. Remember that's perpendicular to the palm and it's the movement of the carpometacarpal joint. So we're gonna put our axis at the carpometacarpal joint and our goniometer arms along the first and second metacarpal. How are you finding uni? It's pretty good, it's pretty full on. I'm here five days a week, but I'm really enjoying it so far, especially the physio prac and I'm enjoying the musculoskeletal anatomy and going in the labs and working with you know, cadavers, looking at real muscles and bones. Initially it was quite like, oh my God, can't believe that's a real body, but <laughs> yeah, it's a really good way to learn and understand where things are. How does it feel for you to see her now at university? <laughs> I'm incredibly proud. Um, knowing and seeing what she's done throughout her schooling years, I, I believe she deserves to be there. Um, I've seen the time and effort and energy that she's put into it, her commitment and dedication. Um, I don't feel for a second that she's not capable of doing what she needs to do. And although I know she says at the moment, I know it's only week three and there's one particular subject that she's struggling, I know I don't have any doubts whatsoever that she's not gonna break that, that subject and, and learn what she needs to learn. She's a fighter and um, that's why she's where she is. We come from a world which is tell me instead of show me. And if you look at a test score, it gives you a number. If you look at a piece of paper, it gives you the words. But what Sophie and her colleagues and what Big Picture represents is the opportunity for those students to actually demonstrate that they've done it. Let's bring in our guests now. Professor Andrew Taggart is the provost at Murdoch University in Perth. And Professor John Fischetti is the Dean of the School of Education at the University of Newcastle. Welcome to you both. Good evening. Good evening, Jeremy. Uh, John Fischetti, first to you. You spoke there a moment ago in that piece about being in a world that's more about tell me than show me. And that model has worked for a lot of people. It does work for a lot of students. What particular character traits work for a big picture program? Because obviously it's not for everyone. So who's taken in and who's turned away? Well, if you think about it, Jeremy, schools for too long have been places that young people go to watch their teachers work. And in many ways, what Big Picture has done is flip that around. Instead of just flipping the classroom, they flip the school. So it starts with a student's passion. And then through the development of a leaving by learning concept, they leave to learn through the internships that were described in that piece. The students actually get the chance then to come back to school, do the rest of the curriculum, but with a relevance that is just not matched by the traditional school setting. 
Uh, Professor Taggart, where do numeracy and literacy expectations and standards fit into a program like this? Are they recalibrated? Are they the same or are they lowered or narrowed? Well, because the students have to complete a, a portfolio, communicate with colleagues, their advisor, advisory teacher, uh, the emphasis on numeracy and literacy is embedded in their work, so they can't escape it. They have to demonstrate good outcomes in numeracy and literacy. John Fischetti, is it an easy out for a student to say, I don't like a particular subject, I don't like maths, therefore I don't have to do it, I'll just go into big picture? Well, I think that's the opposite of what's actually happening. If you look at what you said about the Grattan report earlier, where 40% of current students might be disengaged, they're the ones choosing out of their own future at this point based on the school's experience that they're having. What Big Picture allows students to do by finding their passion and their niche, the current content that's in the current syllabus all around Australia is still met. These students get the proper high school degree, but they leave with so much more. They not only have mastered the curriculum and the literacy and numeracy skills, what they've been able to do then is show evidence that they get what it takes in the old soft skills, the, the new soft skills of the future really are now creative thinking, collaboration, problem solving, uh, co cooperative endeavors, open-mindedness, indigenous perspectives, those things which come from the ability of having done something, not just taken a test and gotten a proper score. It doesn't replace literacy and numeracy. Those skills come along and are probably the skills for the innovation age that are going to get those students a really bright future. Professor Taggart, how did it get to this point that 40% of students are disengaged in the classroom? Has this always been the case? Well, I think the challenge is that uh, it's about winning hearts and minds, the role of a teacher. It's not just about the mind and feeling good about developing relationships with teachers, whether it's in physics or physical education, is crucial. And we know that high quality, effective teachers build relationships with students. And Big Picture does that. So do other um, activities in schools, but uh, it's about winning hearts and minds of students that's most important. But Professor Fischetti, these were the students at a time in, in the past who would go on to just get labouring jobs or lowly paid jobs, which we can't afford in a developing economy with its high tech. Right, so if you really look at it, if we used to think that one third could be successful, get their ticket to the future, one third could hang around and be fine, and one third we could carry on our backs, but there were still good jobs for almost everybody. They could be in the mill or the mine, they could be in the trades, but many and most of those jobs, if they haven't been automated yet, they're going to be, and the skill set to get the jobs in the innovation age are around their ability to collaborate, to solve problems, to create knowledge, invent themselves, entrepreneur themselves, and those skills come from both applying the knowledge and being so keen at the traditional knowledge that they know how to go work with others to help create new knowledge that solves the problems of Australia's future. So it really is applying the learning that most traditional school children don't get the chance to do. Professor Fischetti, there's a much higher ratio of students or advisors uh, from teachers to students, one uh, advisor to every 10 to 15 students in a big picture as opposed to a much greater number, double that in a traditional classroom. And I know a lot of teachers would say, you know, look, give me that sort of ratio and I could produce very good results too. Well, the concept of what our teacher's role is is also transformed by Big Picture because not only are they traditional teachers, they're facilitators and guides and mentors. They have to have interdisciplinary knowledge to challenge the students around the content that isn't embedded in their internship and research projects that go into their portfolio. And they're also helping young people who, because they were disengaged, bring massive issues to the school to continue to work on those challenges. The reason they were disengaged is their boredom and their potentially not thinking that school was relevant, but they also in many ways have to be challenged in ways that traditional teachers haven't necessarily been equipped to do. Andrew Taggart, why is this such a niche program still? It's been going for 20 plus years in the US. Is expense one of the concerns? No, not a particular concern. Most schools, certainly in Western Australia, are, uh, have independence around their budget. So principals make a decision about the priorities in the school. And if connecting with disengaged learners is the priority of the school, um, it can be funded. Andrew Taggart, how much value do employers see in a student who has sidestepped the traditional ATAR academic pathway? Are they ultimately equally employable to someone who has done the ATAR? 
Well, we look at these students from big picture, and we've only had a few currently at Murdoch, um, but they're, they're coming into our university program with good skills around teamwork, around collaboration, and with a passion about learning. So if they're passionate about environmental science, they've learnt a, a lot about chemistry, they've learnt a lot about the natural environment. So they can apply these skills. I do think a good dose of physics, chemistry, chemistry and maths is still very important, and particularly for jobs for the future, where the STEM subjects are going to be more and more important in uh, making our young people employable. John Fischetti, STEM subjects may be important, but the data seems to suggest that when a student is given a choice, they avoid those STEM subjects. Yeah, you know, I, I'm not sure most of the jobs of the future involve only STEM skills. They involve a STEM mindset. And what I love about Big Picture, it provides that creativity and problem solving and innovation where you still have to have high algebraic skills in order to be able to develop an app or to understand algorithms. So it doesn't actually substitute or lessen the need for the STEM skills. It actually increases them. But they're applying them in the internships or, if not, Back at school, the teacher's job is to make sure they get the equivalent of what they would have had in the tr traditional school. So I think in addition to the STEM jobs we want to prepare people for, everyone needs a STEM mindset. John Fischetti, just going back to that idea about how employable these kids are when they graduate, are they considered equals to those who have done the ATAR? Well, if we look at what's not getting uni students jobs at graduation today, it's when they go to an interview and they've never done anything with their degree. What they're asking for is work integrated learning, internship experience, practical experience. And if you think about that at a uni level, big picture kids get that in high school. They haven't even started uni yet. So I think it puts the big picture students at a clear advantage coming in. In addition, for some of the traditional lecture style classes, which are still important that students get some basic knowledge in key content areas other than their passion, the intrinsic motivation they bring because they have a goal in mind and they've already been through a period of time of disengagement means they're actually some of the top students in understanding that they have to learn in multiple ways and multiple uh, different dimensions. They have to write a proper paper. They have to be able to give a proper presentation. And then they can have the time they need to both apply that knowledge and extend their knowledge. So it actually makes them a better student because they're motivated toward a purpose, which quite often school leavers, to be honest with you, don't have. They almost can take a gap year in their first year at uni if we're not careful. Gentlemen, we're out of time. Professor John Fischetti, Professor Andrew Taggart, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. And that is all for Late Line. You can find tonight's stories and interviews on our website, as always. From all of us on the team, good night.